Okay. We left off on the very bottom of Chav Gimel Amad Beis. We had spoken about the Machlokas Revei and the Chachomim. Masher Konsa Yishokon Abaylo. That if a woman acquires something, if a or a slave acquires something, do we see the woman's hand as on a rabbinic level? Slave, the Ogm was on a Torah level. 23b on the bottom. A slave, a coin to a mayor, if you put the money in his hand, even if it's on the condition that the master has no interest in that gift, it's not valid. Because the hand of the slave is the hand of the master. You put something in a woman's hand, according to the Chachomim. According to the Chachomim, you put something in the slave's hand, money, on the condition the master has no interest in that gift, the money is considered the slave. The slave can give that money to the master to bring about his redemption, his emancipation. Okay? What about a woman, rabbinically? A woman, we say, what she acquires is transferred to the husband. Do we say her hand is the husband's hand? Or do we say that she has an independent hand to acquire rabbinically? And therefore, it's just subsequently it's transferred to the husband. So the same thing, so if a gift is given to the woman that the hu husband has no financial interest in it, it remains with the, with the wife. That's the Machlux Rameh and the Chachamim. So now the Gemara says, we have a contradiction, Rami de Rameh de Rameh of Rami de Rabonah de Rabonah. We have a contradiction in the Rameh and we have a contradiction, contradiction, two statements of the Chachamim, the Tanya. So we discussed last week, we just began this, that if a person redeems Masashemi, that the produce, the grain in Eretz Israel, the first tithe is Chuma, which is given to the Kohen. Then you take 10%, which is given to the Levi. Then you take a second 10%, it's called Masashemi. Masashemi, the second 10%. This is done during the first and second years of the sabbatical cycle, and the fourth and fifth years of the sabbatical cycle. You take Masashani, the one who tithes it has to take this produce to Yushalayim, to Yushalayim. One is not permitted to eat it after Yushalayim, it has innate Kedusha, it has sanctity, it's Kedusha. Truma cannot be redeemed, right? What you give to the Kohen, the moment it's designated as Truma, that Kedusha cannot be removed from that grain or that produce. Well, uh, the four out of those seven years regular Jew has an obligation to bring the fruit to Yerushalayim? It's only because it's Masashani. The only reason why you have the obligation to bring those particular fruits yeah. or produce, grain because yeah. it's Masashani. So anytime there's a, the other year is that It's Masa Oni. The second 10% is given to the poor. So uh, it's ordinary. It's just does, the, does the person have the obligation to go to Yerushalayim? You have three times a year you have an obligation to go to Yerushalayim. Right. That's Ali Saregel. That's the big carbon. This you're going only be so let's say you're not interested in taking the Masashen to go to Yushalayim. You give it as a gift to the third party. Say, so, you know, you're going, take it with you, you have, you have more than enough to eat. And what remains is just distributed among the people there. Right? It's fine. It's not a problem. But if you want to eat the produce, the produce could only be eaten only in Yushalayim. But the Torah says, what happens if it's too difficult to transport the produce? The Torah says you could redeem it. You could only redeem it on a minted coin. You just can't redeem it on bullion. It has to be a minted coin. Now, we mentioned, the Torah says, what about the one who actually tithed the Masashemi? Or it's his Masashemi. It's his. And the Torah says, you have to pay value plus a fifth. If a third party redeems somebody else's Masashemi, he only pays value, he doesn't pay the additional fifth. That's the Xerxes Kosov. If a person consecrates something, unrelated to Masashemi, I say this table should be hegdish, should be consecrated. I have first rights of redemption on whatever I consecrate. The Kohen, before he allows a third party to redeem it, the one who initially consecrated, he has first rights to redeem it, of redemption. If the consecrator redeems it, he has to pay value plus a fifth. A third party consecrates it, redeems it, he just pays value, does not pay the additional fifth. This is all Xerxes Kosov. That's what Torah says, okay, the Tanya. And Isha Pode Podo Masasheni Belochomish. Tanakhama says, when a woman redeems Masashani, she must pay the fifth. There's no such thing as the woman redeeming the Masashani below Chomish. Without a Chomish. 
Reb Shimon Aloza Omen Mishum Reb Meir. We don't yet know what the case is. What what exactly is the case? Reb Shimon Aloza Omer Mishum Reb Meir. Isha Podo Masasheni Belochomish. We do have a case where a woman redeems Masasheni without paying the fifth. And we're not speaking about where it belongs to just the third party. Why? Because that's true. It's not only a woman. Anybody that would be the case. We're speaking something which is unique to a woman. It would be a third party if it's. Ruvain being redeeming Shimon's Masasheni, right? He also doesn't pay a fifth. So when we say the argument that whether she does pay the fifth, doesn't pay yeah. the fifth, is not speaking about where the woman is redeeming someone else's Masasheni. So what exactly is the case where they're arguing, does the woman pay the fifth when she does the redemption or does not pay the fifth? Hechi Dami. What exactly is the case? Elamid Vizuzi Debal or Masasheni Debal. The husband has Masasheni. And the husband says to his wife, take my money and redeem my Masasheni. mean, act as my agent for the sake of redemption. Is that the argument with the argument? That, does the woman have to pay the, the fifth when, the, when she does the act of redemption? Zimar says, so of, course, of course the fifth has to be paid. She's the agent of the husband. So the, of course the fifth has to be paid. The woman's qualified to be an agent. So if it's the husband's money and it's the produce of the husband, so of course the fifth has to be paid. Right. So that, I mean, so we're trying to figure out what exactly is the case. That would be true with anyone. Ella bezuzi dido, or masasheni dide. We're speaking about it's her money. So Rashi says, what's the halacha a woman marries, and then she inherits money. Right. So Rashi, that's called nichsei melug. Nichsei melug means the husband has a right to use the money use the money, but he cannot use the money where he actually um, consumes the capital. The capital has to remain intact. He has a right only to benefit from the profits of that capital. Okay? So it's speaking where it's her money. Okay? Zuzi Dido, or Masasheni Dide. And it's his Masasheni. We'll see in a moment. So the reason why he doesn't pay the fifth is because that's the argument. Do you pay the fifth? Don't you pay the fifth? Shemur says, Isha marachmon of Isha. The Torah says, in terms of Rashi says, regarding redeeming Masasheni, it says, Ish mi masro. Ish means a, a male. From his maser, from his 10%. But Isha maser balo, Isha kachadomi. We look at a woman like a third party. A woman does not pay the fifth. Okay, this is important tosis. We have to do. Things. We'll see. We'll, that's that's we have to see tosis in a second. We'll see it right now. No, she has to tithe it. But we'll see in a moment. This pasuk of ish means a woman never pays the fifth. A woman never has to pay the fifth. Even if, she's a landowner. Even if it's her produce and she tithes it, we'll see. Because. No, it was, it was a single woman has a field. They bring in the, pro, the harvest, now she tithes it. She, only she's qualified to tithe it because she owns the harvest. She's obligated to take the second 10%, but when she redeems it, she does not pay a fifth. Because it says, Ish mi masro. Ish is, it, the inference is a man and not a woman. We'll, let's, we'll see Tosis. Correct. Which Tosis has a problem why Ish seems to be should actually absolve her from tithing altogether in, in this particular situation. Tosis, to, to, to it's a free. We'll see. Let's take a look. Bottom Tosis. Bottom Tosis. Very interesting. Elazuzi Dido. Umasi Dido. So, more wanted to say, what are we speaking? It's her money and it's his Maser. It's his Maser Shane. It's his produce. Pirish, Bezuza, Bezuzi Dido, where does she have money from? Benichse Maluk, she inherited money. So the money, the principle is hers. Umasi Dide, and the Maser, the produce is his. Misadosav, it's the produce of his fields. Isha Marachmona, Mimasu Lo, Isha Mimase Balo. The Isha Kiacha Damyo. A woman's considered like a third party. Okay, 
El Havali Lamemer Mimasro Omar Achmonov Lamas Havero. The way Rashi is learning, it seems to be the exclusion is what? It's uh, uh, the husband and not the wife of the husband's field. But factually, this, this, he's saying she's like Acher. But it, it's always that way. When a third party redeems someone else's Masashani, you never pay the fifth. It's a valid redemption, but one doesn't pay the fifth. So what, what is, according to Rashi, why is he saying? Because it's Ish, although Isha, it's a man and not a woman. This is unrelated to the to the issue that she's a woman. In any situation where it's a third party, a third party never, never pays the fifth. It's only when it's, it, the Masashani belongs to the person himself. We'll see. Vinilu Rabbi Nutam, the Goras Rabbi Nutam, as a result of this, he has another text. His text reads differently. Bezuzi Didor, or Masa Didor. Not Masa the, the way Rashi's Girsa reads, it's her money and his produce. The Girsa is, it's her money and her produce. Her produce. Vachi Prusho. Isha Marachmono, the Mosif Chomish, Al Masro. Only the male adds the fifth to his own Masasheni, below Isha. And out of Afilo Bezuzi Dido, Umasi Dido. Although the produce is hers and the money is hers, when it, the Torah uses the, the word male, the man, the inference is a man and not a woman. Even if she's a widow or she's a divorcee, it's totally hers. A woman does not pay the extra additional fifth. He says, quote Toraskan Parshis Bahar, Im Gol Yigal Ishmi Masro, the Rabbis Isha. It says, if a person goes and redeems his Maser, comes, it says, that comes to include a woman. So it seems to be a woman does pay the fifth. He says, no, Lini Padio Dafka Marbina on this Isha. It's important. Seemingly, if it's his Ish, a woman should be excluded totally. Right? That a woman cannot redeem whatsoever. It says ish. Ish means lo isha. The answer is I have a reboy. I have the Torah. Since it reiterates the word redemption, that comes to include the woman. So here I have an exclusion and I have an inclusion. So what do I include? What do I exclude? In regard to the ability to redeem, a woman's qualified to redeem. But in terms of paying the additional fifth, that's ish lo isha. Only the man pays the additional fifth and not the woman when the redemption takes place. Now he says something interesting here. Just an introduction of what Tosa says. What is the 613th mitzvah in the Torah? What? The mitzvah of writing, writing a Sefer Torah. Good. Now, is a woman obligated to write a Sefer Torah? No. Why not? What's the reason? Rabbi. What does the Murad of Bukhom say? Okay. So, it, it can't be because it's, it's a, not because it's a mitzvah ashes in Magrama, right? It's not a mitzvah ashes in Magrama. You know, there's a, there's a tosis. The Gemara in, uh, in Kedushan later, a Chavtes, usually this is a Bris Torah, it says that uh, a, it speaks about the mitzvahs that a father has regarding his son. So the first mitzvah a father has regarding his son is Lomel Ispino, Chayv Odom Lomel Ispino. Father must circumcise his child. Okay? So the mother says, what about a mother? Does a mother have an obligation? So the mother says, no. The mother cites a puzzle. It's an inclusion. We say the father and not the mother. It's so more of a chav One second, one second, one second. Right? Right. It says, regard to Avraham Avinu, as God commanded him. So Mara says, Oso Velo Oso. He's commanded, she's not commanded. Therefore, mother does not have an obligation to circumcise her child, only the father. So, why is she absolved from circumcising a child? Oso Velo Oso. He and not her. So it seems to be, but if not for the Pasuk, 
what would you say? A woman has an obligation to circumcise, a mother has an obligation to circumcise a child. So, I mean, so all that we should explain. Now, what happens if you have a Jew who's not, a child that's not circumcised? Every Jew has an obligation to make sure that child is circumcised, whether it's a man or a woman. That's, that's not gender related. As a Jew, we have an obligation, because it says, Himo lochem kol zohar. Every male Jew has to be circumcised. So if nobody attended to that child's circumcision, it's, a, it's an obligation on the community. The community's responsibility is to make sure that child is circumcised. But as a personal obligation, as a mother regarding her child, she has no obligation. As a father, has an obligation to her son. That's the Gemara. So asks, what do we need a possible? It's time-oriented. We say that whenever you deal with a time-oriented mitzvah, the woman is absolved. The woman has no obligation to say the Kriyashma. Take the lulav, sitting in the sukkah. Of course, time, it's a time-determined mitzvah. So since if you circumcise a child at night, it's not a valid circumcision. It says, V'yom below Belayla. It says, V'yom hashmidi yimba b'sar aloso on the eighth day. So it says day and not night. So since you're not able to circumcise the child at night, it's a, it's a mitzvah sasun mangroma. So what do we have to say to Posuk to absolve the woman? It's classified as a mitzvah, which is determined by time. That's Tosa's question. So Tosa's answer is that the Mar is going according to the opinion, which we don't rule this way, that a circumcision at night is a valid circumcision. That's Tosa's answer. It's going like Reb Lezer, Reb Lezot, a nighttime circumcision is valid. Okay? So, the halacha that we rule that a nighttime circumcision is not valid, we don't need the Pasuk to absolve the mother. The mother is absolved because Mitzvah is not Gromel. Stosis asks, but what about, but the Mitzvah only starts at the eighth day? So again, it's determined by time. So Mitzvah says, no, that's not Mitzvah is not Gromel. Why? Because Mitzvah is not Gromel is, the Mitzvah is determined when, you, when you're obligated, when you're not obligated, when you're absolved. But over here, once the mitzvah comes into effect, it remains, remains in effect. Therefore, that's not considered Mitzvah's Magroma. Okay? That's Tosa's answer. So, but the first, first answer was, the question is, what is the basis for the question? Since a nightly circumcision is not valid, so therefore, it's the Mitzvah's Magroma. So, let's understand. So, there's a famous question from Shai Gassari, yes, on Tosa's. Seemingly, this has nothing with Mitzvah's Magroma. What is the class case Mitzvah's Magroma? That a mitzvah is determined by time. Time dictates the obligation. Now, child is eight days old, you have to circumcise it. For whatever reason, the meal is delayed. On the ninth day when you circumcise him, on the tenth day, the twentieth day, it's the same obligation. It's not a different obligation. There's a mitzvah to, to let's say, to take the lulav. Sunday's mitzvah the first day of Sukkot's is mitzvah is not, is not Monday's. The second day of Sukkot's is mitzvah. Right? It's a new obligation. Every day of Sukkot's you have a separate obligation to take the lulav. Right? It's a different mitzvah. It's a different mitzvah. Here the Torah says the, this same mitzvah can only be fulfilled only during the daytime. But it's the same mitzvah. It's not, the time is not determining the mitzvah. Mitzvah is my grumma means when the time determines the mitzvah. Here the, the mitzvah is not determined by time. The mitzvah starts on the eighth day. However, this mitzvah, to fulfill it, you cannot fulfill the mitzvah at night time. But on the fifteenth day, it's no different than the mitzvah of the eighth day. Therefore, it has no relevance to Mitzvah Man Grama. That's the difficulty with Tosis. So let's talk. There's a mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. The halach is Torah says, but you're not permitted to write on Shabbos and Yom Tif. You're going to say, well, it's Mitzvah Man Grama. So the answer is, the Torah says, every Jew has an obligation to write a mitzvah, uh, Sefer Torah. So it's an ongoing mitzvah. 365 days of Shabbos and Yom if you're not permitted. One second. You understand? Okay. George Washington's white horse. What color was it? Green? Okay. So over here, we're talking about... So over here, we're saying if it's the same mitzvah, it has no relative mitzvah's mangroma. The mitzvah writing Sefer Torah, every Jew has an obligation with Mitzvah Mitzvah to write a Sefer Torah. Whether it's Shabbos Yom Tif, you have the obligation. Except this, there, there, there's an obstacle that the Mitzvah, you're not permitted to perform the Mitzvah. Because you're not permitted to write. But do you have an obligation, Shabbos, to write the Sefer Torah? The answer is yes. At night, do you have an obligation to circumcise the son? The answer is yes. 
However, you do it at night, it's not valid. But you have the obligation to circumcise your son. Right? So there, that's not called Mrs. Magrum. So now let's get back to it. So why is a woman absolved for minutes from writing Sefer Torah? A woman has no obligation to write a Sefer Torah. Why not? Right? That's the question. So the Rambam says in Sefer Amitzvos, why does the Torah obligate one to write a Sefer Torah? That you should have a text to study Torah from. So since a woman has no obligation to study Torah, therefore she's not in need of a text. That's the reason why a woman is absolved from the midst of writing a Sefer Torah. That's the Rambam. That's the Rambam. So Tosa is going to say something similar re- regarding Masu. So what, what is it? What is one has to do with the other? Because he has no obligation to... to the reason Torah, why the Torah obligates you to... Right. Obligation to right. 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 No, because from the Psukim, the way the Psukim state the thing, the way the Torah expresses it regarding the mitzvah, the whole purpose is to have a text, a written text, to study from that text. You want to you want to buy his wife a Sefer Torah for uh, for an anniversary present? No, no, no. It's, based on it's based on psukim. It's based on the verses. Okay, we'll see in a moment. Tosa speaks about mitzvah masasheni. What is the mitzvah masasheni? Leman yilmat. We'll see in a moment. It's for the sake of learning. Go to Shalai, become inspired you to learn. So you would think a woman has no obligation to study, so she has no obligation, even masasheni. I have a, so therefore, I need a reboy. I need an, an inclusion to say no. Despite that, she still has an obligation. Her tithing, she's obligated. And her tithing is a valid tithing. The, she's absolved from the fifth, but the actual tithing of Masishain that she's obligated. And she has a chiv to bring to Shalayim. Like everyone has the obligation. Let's see it inside. No relevance to them. That's nothing. You have an appellation Marie Korban. If you tell me it's Avoda, the Avoda is day, not night. Bring the Korban, that's nothing to do with the Avoda. That, that's officiating. Officiating only has relevance to the coin. A woman's not, not qualified to officiate. Okay, let's see. Mitzvah says, it's a question Mitzvah says, uh, Mitzvah Baba Vera. That's, that's the whole discussion. It's, it's a question. It's a question. If a person goes and takes Lulav, lulav Agozel on the second day Yomtif, is it that it's not a mitzvah whatsoever, or it's a mitzvah, and therefore if you want to be Yotz, with the, the halach difference is if you t- get another, if you'd have another Lulav, which is not a, in a context of mitzvah, do you have an obligation to, take to do the mitzvah over again? So it's a question. If it's a mitzvah, except you get no credit for the mitzvah, so then you can't take another lulav. If you take what? No, no, you can't be out. You already fulfilled the mitzvah. You're only penalized that you get no credit for the mitzvah. But fulfill the mitzvah, you fulfill the mitzvah. Or no, it's nothing. It's not even considered an act of a mitzvah. So if, it's, it's, if that's the case, you weren't yotzi yet. No, that's part. No, you don't need that. Because it's lochem. That's lochem. It's not yours. Of course, the Torah says with Tzarta, yes, the way the Torah expresses it, it doesn't say you should take silver. It says Tzarta means minted, Kesef Suro. It's, it's money that has a form to it. That means it's been minted. Is No, 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 no there's nothing to it. It's bending. Kesef Tzuro. Kesef Tzuro means minted, minted coins you need. Yeah, but it's, uh, it doesn't qualify for the redemption. Okay, just let's see it inside. It's, um, the Soka Daito, I would have thought maybe a woman is not obligated to take Masa whatsoever. Masa Shani, Hok Sivay Bemasir, Laman Tilmad Lagiro, the Dashina Mine Bisfri, the Godl Masir, here. What is the great value of taking Maiser Shani to Yushalayim? Shemei with a Talmud, Keshesho of Yushalayim Lachilas Masro. When you remain in Yushalayim for the period of time to eat the Maiser Shani, 
you become inspired, and that inspiration rings to Yerushalayim and, and what follows. What are you talking about? It's not a mitzvah. Well, why is that a mitzvah? Why is that a... It's because like you're the inspired executive. No, it says the objective of bringing the Masashen is to be Lirus Hashem Elokecho and to do his mitzvahs and do so and so forth. That's, that's the value. Laman Yilmat, to learn how to fear God. That's Limanat Torah. I'm going to teach you how to... How to, how to but a woman doesn't have an obligation. Exactly. Exactly. So if you think... So the way we're saying now, she shouldn't have to bring. But but we have gold yigal. That despite that, that is that is a benefit of it. But that's not that's not the crux of it. That's gold yigal comes to include. If I don't have the pasuk as it reads, I say a woman is is, is absolved totally from Masusheni. But but since it's a man gol yigal, it reiterates that comes to include the woman. Despite the fact that she has no obligation, nevertheless, she has an obligation. It's only because of the Pasuk. Vahava mir isha came in labas li muri, lesser bidini maser. Right? She has no obligation of maser. Loch yitzchik du rebuye, therefore I need, the re- I need the inclusion that despite she has no obligation to study, she must bring it. Vaudid my Torah's quan of cotton. Let's stop for a moment. There's a famous, famous question. Does a woman have an obligation in Birch Torah before she studies? A perfect girl, a woman wants to study. What if she wants to study Torah? Does she have an obligation to say Birch Torah before she studies? She has no obligation to study Torah, right? But factually, a woman evidently has an obligation to study because she has an obligation in her own personal mitzvahs. She has to study those mitzvahs. Right? That's the question they ask on the Ramah too. How can you tell me she doesn't need a, stec- a text to study. She has to study whatever has re- relevance to her. So she also needs a text to study from. Like the man needs this text to study from. That's the question he is. So David, what do you say? Yes. Now, is there an obligation to buy a person that has to take valid meaning on sukkahs, four species? So you must purchase them or you must take initiative to come upon down. Is that... Is there a chiyuv of an obligation to purchase the four minim? Is there an obligation? Yeah. For a man, no obligation. It's called hefsha mitzvah. That's only to facilitate. The mitzvah is to take the, the dollar minim, to waive them. That's only to circumstance. Oh, God, if you don't. Right? You, you have to create, you ha- must take them. So if it's understood, but if that's not a mitzvah. That's to facilitate the mitzvah. That's called no building sukkah is a mitzvah. That's building no. That's a mitzvah unto itself. There's a mitzvah to build a sukkah. No, it's a Rashi. It's a Gemara, singular Gemara. Nobody argues, right? Good, good. It's a mitzvah matzah, right? It, one of the tired mitzvahs is not to is to buy matzah, not to purchase matzah. It's to eat matzah. So you own it. So you have to acquire it. So the acquisition. The ac- what about a person inherited matzah? He doesn't even have to acquire it. So that's only a circumstance. So the matzah that you eat should be your matzah. Well, he's gifted matzah. Same thing. Yeah, you can't be gifted. You have to do an active acquisition. So inheritance, you need no, no active acquisition. It just comes to you. And gifted, you should acquire the matzah. Yeah, but so you'd say, so you see, act, you need, act, mm-hmm. maybe that's the mitzvah. But there's no mitzvah to acquire matzah. It's not one of the 248 positive commandments. The mitzvah is achilas matzah. Right? That, the mitzvah is eating the matzah. No. The mitzvah is lo niach tzvah. Shatim lo sayodech, totof is beidim echo. That's the mitzvah. That's, this, this is all classified as hechshim mitzvah. Okay? So now, a, a, a woman has an obligation to study Torah. To, to study the laws which pertain to her. There's no mitzvah to study. The study of Torah for a woman is only to facilitate her, only to enable her to be knowledgeable, to be able to perform her mitzvah, to do the mitzvah. She has no obligation. If a woman, watch, she has no mitzvah of Talmud Torah. A woman has no mitzvah to study Torah for the sake of Torah. It's only a means to an end. A man has no obligation to study Torah. It's not a means. It has, it's, it's an end unto itself to study Torah. 
What? Okay, you have to the brother. Okay, it's separate discussion. But what's the purpose of that? It's only to perform the mitzvah as prescribed. Yes, but it's, it's instructing her. She has to be taught. But the mitzvah is not the, the, the teach is not the mitzvah to, to absorb the, the information. The value of having the knowledge is to be able to, to, act, to actualize the mitzvah. That's where it begins. That's where it ends. So it's very good. So the mitzvah of having a text is to study for the sake of studying. That's the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. A woman has no mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Okay? No, no, he's co- quoting a... He's quoting a... Torah's Kohanim. Go out, Yigal. Right. That's what the Rabbos is Isha. So we're, I mean, just in the context of the Pasuk, it seems like it would make more sense to say that the woman would have to, when she redeems, she'd have to pay a fifth as opposed to... No, but we have another Pasuk, which is the exclusion. It says Ish. Ish mi masro, ish velo isha. Yeah, but so, so how do we reconcile? It's, it's like, it's a contradictory right, so understanding. Right, say that in the situation that Gemara is describing. We don't know what that situation is yet. We, don't, we're the we haven't we're figured it out. We haven't figured it out yet, what it's, what it's speaking about. So a woman has an obligation to tithe, to take the 10%, the second 10%, but she does not pay the fifth if she should redeem it. That's how we reconcile both. We include her, but she, we exclude her. The include her, she should be like a man. Right. The answer is no, but she, it's a zish. She's not exact like the man. The man, if he redeems it, he has to pay the fifth. The woman, if she redeems it, she doesn't have to pay the fifth, even though it's her own masa. It's her own masa sheni. So the double lushing is on the demon. No, on my side. Right. right. So you would think that the woman would have to pay. You, you're looking for a second person that needs to pay. That's doing the redemption, as opposed to the second. But we're saying over there, it's not only that; it's the mitzvah. It's, it includes it even the tithing. When we speak about goal yigal, in that context, we're speaking about if we're saying she has the ability to redeem, that means she 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 has the ability even to affect it in that way. Well, it's both. It's understood to take it. She has to take it. She has to take it. Let's go a little further. Vod ters koanim cotton yish, but we find cotton a minor. Is excluded. Okay, so that's Tosis. So that's the question. So the smug says that a person says Brokh even on Hashem itself. Even in Hashem, it's a, a woman says Birchas Yes. Even though she has no mitzvah to study Torah, where it's an end unto itself, it's only to facilitate her being able to perform the mitzvah. Well, woman says Birchas That's a, it's a separate discussion. Why do you say Birchas What about in the old country, used to be a book for has it in English. Okay. What do you have to do about Senorano? Anything they study. What? Not that because Mitzvah says Mangroma. That's why. The Mechaber rules that a woman should not say Mitzvah says it's Mangroma. Limited Torah is not Mitzvah says it's Mangroma. Right? The mitzvahs are ongoing. Whatever she studies, the mit- it's to know what she has to, to, to do. <laughs> she has to keep going. Let's say a woman is not going to study anything today. But let's say she says psukim. She says psukim. Okay? She still said, she, she says, said words of Torah. That's a problem. Everybody goes, you can't. You can't, cannot. No, Abba Rabba. Abba Rabba is Birchus Torah. Right. First part, that, that's a question they ask. What do you have to say? Psukim, you said Kriya Shema. That's a, that's a question they ask. 
Okay, let's get back to the Gemara. Okay? So we're trying to figure out the case. We have an argument. According to the Tanakhama, it says that there's no such thing as a woman redeeming Masasheni without a Chomish. Rav Shimon Loza says there's a mayor that a woman redeems Masasheni without paying a Chomish. So what exactly is the case? El Lapki Aigabno, so evidently, what is it speaking about? The Akti Lo Achimono. A third party gave her a gift, a hundred dollars. Vomalo Al Menashe Tifti Bosa Masa. And I'm giving it to you on the condition that you redeem the Masa. So what do we say? Quite to her May, you don't pay the fifth. So evidently, what does it mean? Because the money she's using is her own money. That you're able to put a limitation on the money. It cannot transfer. So we see, according to Rameya, that the woman's hand is not the husband's hand. According to the Tanakhama, which is the Chachamim, they say the money does transfer. So if the money does, why does it transfer? But it, there was a limitation put on it. The answer is because he cannot put such a limitation on it. So the money does transfer. So when the woman redeems the master for the husband, she's the equivalent of a shliach. According to the Rameya, Rameya says she's not the shliach. Whose money is she using? She's using her own money to redeem it. According to the Tanakhama, that we say that the hand of the woman is the hand of the husband. It's actually the husband's money that's being used to redeem his own masashene. Therefore, we pay the fifth. So how do we, so we have a stira? Same argument, but, but the, the, the positions are inverted here. So what is the more answer? No problem. Invert the opinions. They're being stated, they're being quoted incorrectly. We'll have to continue. <laughs>